This is bad business practice. There is no excuse for that. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having a lovely, wonderful, fantastic day. This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. I'm gonna go ahead and invite you to get cozy. You want me to go ahead and grab a snack, slip into something a little bit more sweatpants? Because I truly do not know how long today's video is going to be, but I have come, I've come prepared. I've come prepared to talk for a very long time. I typically would not have written out a script like this. I don't script out my videos, but for this one, I really wanted to make sure my thoughts were as concise as possible, even though there are a lot of them. But I really wanted to make sure I had all the information lined out in like a nice timeline for you guys so you can really follow everything. Everything that I'm going to be saying today is my own personal experience with this company, with this brand. I am just sharing with you all what happened to me, the experience I had with them. This is just a review. It is my personal honest review. So let's go ahead and get on into this video. Today we're gonna to be talking about the We Please Luxury French subscription box and uh, exactly what I experienced with it. So a quick overview of We Please. It is a bi-monthly subscription. It is supposed to come with full-size luxury French goods that are individually curated by French influencers. The products are said to be meticulously researched and reviewed before placed into the box. The box is $150 per box, but there is generally a coupon that will give you some type of discount off of your first box, making it around $100. Mine personally was $97.50. The box is supposed to come with 10 to 12, 10 to 12 full-size items, ranging from jewelry, beauty, apparel, to Epicure. And according to the website, it's supposed to be a luxury experience that transports you to France and back. However, as I have said, my personal experience was anything but luxurious. I've already made two videos on the subscription, but I'm going to go ahead and kind of condense everything down into this video right here. If you still want to watch me unbox those first two boxes that I did receive, you guys can definitely check those out. I'll leave them down below in the description box. But for now, let's go ahead and get on to my first box that I received. I ordered my first box Tuesday, January 7th, 2020 with just all sorts of hope and big shiny eyes, really excited for a very luxurious experience. I was charged $97.50 on January 7th, the very day that I ordered the box, and then I proceeded to wait six months to receive my first box. Keep in mind, this box does ship out of Texas and not France, even though it is a French subscription, it is shipping inside the continental United States and not internationally. From the point of purchase to when I actually received my box, it was 192 days later, or six months and 12 days. At the very absolute latest, I should have received my box in March, but it did not come until July 17th. Jumping in here, I do actually think I have a correction. It appears on the tracking information, which is kind of confusing to read. The box wasn't shipped out until July 17th. I didn't receive it until July 21st. According to the tracking information, there's a shipping label created in Carlton, Texas on March 3rd, but the box itself did not arrive for four months. Oh, and 14 days. Four months and 14 days later, I finally got the box. When you create a shipping label, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're actually shipping out the item that day. You can create a shipping label and then just hold onto your item and it won't actually start shipping or tracking any more information until it is received with the company. In this case, it is FedEx that they're shipping through. And you cannot tell me that FedEx had that box for four months and 14 days and it just took them that long to get it to me. It doesn't take that long for FedEx to ship out from Texas to Kentucky. They simply just didn't ship it. I received an email March 3rd saying that my box would be shipping soon and then I would receive another email once it actually left the facility, but that email never came. An email that did come, however, was on February 20th, 2020, letting me know that my card was going to be charged for the full amount of $150 in 10 days. It's nice they sent a reminder, but at this point I have been charged $97 for the first box, $150 for the second box, and I had still yet to have anything physically in my hands. Just in my personal opinion, I think they should redo how they charge with shipping. I don't think they should charge you upfront automatically and then ship out your box two, three, four, five, six months later. I think you should be charged much closer to the actual shipping date, but that's just me. So eventually it had just been taking way too long. I hadn't heard anything from them. So I sent in a request form on April 21st, 2020, basically just asking for like any information about my box. I responded very quickly to my request, which was nice. They did point me to another email that apparently was sent out to everybody on April 16th, which basically apologized for the delays in shipment. They said that with everything going on, the, you know, the, the big sick shipping was delayed, but boxes would be shipping out the following week. Like I 
I said, this email was sent out on April 16th, which was one month and 13 days after the shipping label was created for my box. Things didn't begin closing down until the end of March, so I have no idea, like, between those two dates, how they couldn't get their shipments out when the shipping labels were already created, but whatever. So back to the request that I sent and the response that I got. In that response, they said all shipments have been halted, even though per their last email, shipments were supposed to be coming out in that same week I got a response from them. They also said, which I thought was interesting, that they were dealing with all the issues going on at that time before it was announced to the public. So they had some like insider information uh, because they deal with shipments from Europe and it affected Europe before it affected the US. And okay, sure, but um, if you already have gotten all the items for your box, which you had been advertising and showing spoilers, all of those things should have already been to you. The items should have already been packed in boxes for the shipping labels that you printed out, you created, to be put on those boxes to send out. So if you're saying that things were delayed because you weren't able to get shipments from Europe, that doesn't make any sense for at least the box that was supposed to be sent out in March. Because that box should have already been packed, filled, and ready to send out to customers. Apparently they had problems getting all their items from France because they all come from France, which I totally get. But then there are other places, like I ordered towels from Etsy from like a small business in Turkey. I ordered bulk towels from Turkey and they got to me within a week during the same time frame. I just feel like they were maybe using this as a bit more of an excuse than it truly was at this time. So anyway, they continue to say that boxes should be shipping out the following week. Uh, mine certainly, however, did not. So as I said, six months and 12 days later, I finally received my very first package from We Please. And honestly, it, it truly took me by surprise. What I found inside of the box when I finally opened it, I was not expecting it. I was not expecting it. So when I got it, the box just like looked smaller than I anticipated for $150 worth of like French stuff. And it felt kind of light and there, there's a reason for that. So I started unboxing it. Like I said, I do have those two unboxings. If you guys want to check them out, I'll link them down below. And I came across a little paper insert that said, more to come. Don't worry. We didn't forget about your remaining items. They're coming soon in a separate shipment. We apologize for the delay. The audacity, the absolute audacity. I've waited six months for this box and now I'm not even getting the full thing. Now I have to wait longer for my other products to arrive. Why were they not all in this box at one time? You're not still getting shipments from overseas because you already put out all the spoilers. All the boxes should have already been packed. What is, what's happening? How are all the pieces not inside the box? The items that did come in the box were like they were okay. They were okay. They were fine. I got a little bracelet on a string. I got a blanket. I do love me some blankets. I got some paper you burn, a lip balm, and a barrette, which was made in China. The blanket was supposed to be $70. The paper was supposed to be $10. The little string bracelet was $70, which... Okay, uh, the lip balm was 10 and the barrette was $7. So the total for my box missing the rest of my items was $167 in value. Thank goodness I had a coupon, honestly, because I would have been paying $150 for $160 in value, which is ridiculous. I mean, paying hundred bucks for it, I wasn't too stoked about either, but what could I do? I personally would have preferred to have purchased three FabFitFun boxes for the same price as one $150 Weed Please box. I could have gotten three blankets in the fall plus like 40 other things. I was able to find a list of everything that was supposed to come in the box and it only said that there were going to be eight items in the box if you actually received everything, which their website clearly states you're supposed to get 10 to 12 full-size items. I was missing two serums and some type of like flower jelly that you like eat, I guess which I'm, I'm kind of okay with missing out on that one. But honestly, the big, well, not the biggest, it, all of this is the big issue. Like the whole thing is just an issue. Uh, but one of the many issues is that the items that were supposed to come later just never came. I never received the rest of my items that were supposed to come in my initial box. So I was missing almost $140 in value for my first box and I had already paid so much money to them and I had received so very little. So that was pretty much my first box, everything I experienced with the first one. So let's go ahead and move on into box number two. So as I mentioned, I was charged for my second box in March. This time it was for the full amount of $150. And on March 7th, when that charge went through at this time, I had been charged a total of $247.50 for a subscription I had not yet seen in person. So at that point, I had nothing physically in my hands from We Please, but I had been charged nearly $300. However, the second box that I got was just like the tiniest bit better as far as like shipping speed, because this time I only had to wait 165 
five days or five months and 12 days from the point of purchase to me actually receiving the box. So it took like a month off. What I do find interesting though is that the order was placed on March 7th. Their site said it was shipped out the 16th of July, four months later, but according to FedEx, who I trust much more, the box didn't make it to them till the 12th of August, five months after purchase. It was delivered by FedEx to me on August 19th. So that means the box was physically with FedEx for just one week, which it just seems like regular shipping speeds to me. I'm sure we please wasn't just paying for any express shipping or anything. So at this point, August 19th, 2020, I had received one and one half boxes. However, the charges were still coming in. Because it had taken them half a year to get the first box to me and the payments just automatically occur, I have been charged again on May 7th and July 7th, $150 each time. So before I ever had my first box in my hands, the first shipment actually made it to me, I have been charged a total of $547.50. Nearly $600 for a subscription that I had yet to see in person. This is bad business practice. There is no excuse for that. Sorry, getting a little like worked up here, but my goodness, <laughs> this is just not how you operate a good business. It's not, there's absolutely no way a true real business can survive like this, taking people's money and not giving them anything in return. Like I said before, there's a name for that. I am absolutely positive that things that were going on at the time did affect business some, but I can guarantee you that most other businesses, truly well-operated run of businesses, were still getting their products out to people. I know they were. I had no other problems with any other subscriptions that I subscribe to. Some of them are from much smaller companies than places like BoxyCharm and Ipsy. I get more like indie subscriptions and guess what? They all got to me. Now I know that they're getting things from overseas. That shouldn't have affected the March box at all whatsoever, but for subsequent boxes, maybe they did have an issue, but you know what? You have to take responsibility and you have to say, we're not gonna be able to get orders fulfilled. We cannot keep taking people's money. Let's put the subscription on hold until we can kind of regroup and figure out what to do. It is not on the customer to be like, well, I haven't received my box in a while, but I keep paying for them and I hope, I really hope one day they show up. So I guess maybe I should suspend my subscription until like they figure, no, you need to take charge of your own business and say, listen, we are not gonna be able to fulfill orders because of this, this, and this reason. And because of that, we are going to put a hold on our subscription and once everything is kind of figured out or we know how to move forward, then we will reinstate everybody's subscription. But what you don't do is take your customers $150 every other month and then just give them nothing in return. No products, no answers, no true dates of when things are actually gonna be coming. Anyway, so inside my actual second box, which looked truly disgusting on the outside, still not sure what that mystery like seepage stain was. And also the uh, the box on the inside was somehow smashed up. The outer packaging wasn't smashed, it was just gross looking, but the inside box was all smashed up, which leads me to believe that happened like in their warehouse. So inside of there, I got a French press, which is only French in the name because it was actually made in China. I also got a pair of sheer socks, a moisturizing serum, Christoph Robin hair stuff, a bottle of honey, a cleanser, some nail polish, another serum, and a little very cheap filling ring. At least this time we were close to the 10 to 12 products, I received nine, so we're, we're getting closer. Trying to find prices for these items was a little bit difficult because the things that they advertised like in their spoilers and stuff and like on my subscription addiction didn't really match up with each other. Nonetheless, the box was around like a $300 value, which is what they advertised. However, uh, I do have one issue. The French press that was advertised to me and everybody else that was supposed to be in this box, it was somewhere like around a 70 to $80 value. Very cute looking, very pretty. And I didn't realize this when I got my first box, but the one they advertised to me and the one I received are two very different things. There is a chip in the spout. So this is the one that I received. And this, I'll pop a picture over here, is the one that they advertised. It has a different top to it. It's an entirely different brand. It is not the same French press. This one I found on Amazon for about $30 to $40. And honestly, the reviews on this French press, just, they weren't good. <laughs> they weren't good. Uh, they said that everything in this box is supposed to be meticulously researched and just really like professionally picked out. But if they did any research at all, at least on Amazon, you would see that people had a lot of problems with this French press. It broke easily, it was too thin, the, it just, the reviews weren't good. So the second box, it was okay. And if it was in like the $50 range, I'd be like, yeah, okay, well that's fine. But it wasn't, it was $150. And for $150, I was very disappointed, not to mention that it took forever to get to me. So those are the two boxes, well the, the one and a half boxes out of the four that I actually purchased that I received. And I did put out some videos about them and Weebly saw them and they responded. 
before we get into their response, which turns out to be quite the doozy, I would love to tell you guys about today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you are looking to create a beautiful website to promote yourself or your business, Squarespace has all the tools you need. Create an eye-catching, unique website that truly represents your brand easily by selecting one of the mini starter layouts and then customizing it to fit your needs and aesthetic. It's so easy to add sections to your site and then fill them with your own content, such as galleries, text, quotes, videos, calendars, social links. There's truly so much to choose from. When I was creating my website, apparitionsvintage.com, for my vintage shop, I really wanted to show off the store and the products. And one easy but effective way of doing that was by connecting my socials to the site. I connected my Instagram to my website and now my feed appears automatically. And when you click an image, it takes you straight to my Instagram. I also love how simple it is to add a store page to my website. So when I'm ready to start selling online, I can simply add my products to the page and the customers can shop directly from my website. It's my dream to take my business to the next level. And I truly think that Squarespace has all the tools available to help me do that. So check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Alexandria Ryan for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And just thank you so very much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and helping to support the channel. All right, so as I said, I did make one video about each box, two videos in total. And then I waited to receive the rest of my first box and the two other boxes that I had paid for. But as you can probably gather, and as I've said, they never came. Uh, what I did get though was an email from the company. So on Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020, soon after I published my second video on August 31st, I got an email from We Please. And it read, Bonjour, Alexandria. We would like to apologize about your negative experience with We Please. We truly appreciate you for taking the time to share such a detailed review about your boxes on your YouTube channel and are disheartened that several of the items were disappointing, to say the least. We're sorry to hear you're less than satisfied. Please know that our standards have now been raised higher because of your important feedback. Unfortunately, the importation of our products have been disrupted due to the worldwide Thing. Since recent restrictions from our carrier change prohibiting us to ship our products on pallets, we are now shipping in smaller batches, which results in incomplete delivery and or lost packages. We are trying our best to limit uh, adverse impact on nationwide logistic disruption and will try our best to sort out the solution. A member of our team recently tried communicating with you directly commenting on your first review. Not sure if you saw it. I did not. As it is no longer visible on your feed. Are they trying to say that I like deleted the comment or something? I certainly did not. I, I don't delete comments. However, by monthly subscription can be suspended to avoid additional charges from purchasing prior to receiving any boxes. Furthermore, our system sends out emails approximately two weeks before your next scheduled payment in case you'd like to suspend or cancel. We took the liberty to suspend your account as your next payment is scheduled in five days. If you'd like to fully cancel your order and receive a refund of $300 for your two remaining boxes, please let us know and we'll make sure it's handled immediately. So unfortunately, that email went to my spam folder and the spam folder is a very scary place for me to go. I try not to go there often. That's that's where, that's um, where my channel got hacked from. So I don't go there often, but every now and then I do kind of just like flip through and see if there's anything I have missed. And I didn't do that and I didn't see their email until November 9th, which is definitely, I, I feel bad about that. Uh, I'm sorry, that is my fault that I didn't get back to them quicker. But on November 9th, I did respond and I said, hello, I'm so sorry. I'm just not coming across this. It seemed to make its way into my spam folder. I understand the difficulty with obtaining products through the the thing. I own my own business as well and have had a terrible time to get a few of the items that I need to produce products that I usually do. However, I have still only received one and a half boxes. I never even received the rest of the items from the incomplete box. So though I know there are delays, surely it wouldn't take this many months to receive the items I paid for, which is four boxes in total. If the other boxes are not going to arrive, then yes, I would like a refund for the boxes I paid for and never received. And then on November 18th, 2020, I received the response, hi, Alexandria. I'm deeply sorry about the delay in response to further avoid disappointments. We have decided to cancel and refund your account for your remaining orders. I don't know why they have decided to cancel my account because I just, I told them to, but that's okay. Uh, please see the confirmation of refunds, each in the amount of $150 for your May and July orders. Best of luck in all future endeavors. So that's that's where I left it at that point. I just, I left it. I was like, okay, there's some little like pictures down here of what appear to be confirmations, even though they're like super blurry and I, I can't see them at all. But I just assumed because of those confirmations and the fact that they said that they would be refunding me, that they would refund me. One would at least think anyway. Uh, what I didn't understand though is that even though my account had been suspended, meaning that I wouldn't be charged for any future boxes, I had already paid in May and July for boxes. And by this time when I was actually refunded those boxes, that wasn't until November. November 18th is when those boxes were supposed to be refunded. So between May 
and November, those boxes were never shipped out. Not only were they never shipped out, not even a shipping label was created for either of those boxes. Maybe I could see the July one, but the May one, there was never a shipping label created for it. So they had no intention, it appears, of shipping that out between May and November. <laughs> so in the almost four months between purchase and account suspension, and the almost six months between purchase and refund, there was not a shipping label created for that package. If I didn't get a refund for the May box, who knows when I ever would have actually received it. But at least I got refunded, right? They refunded me, right? That's what they said. They're gonna refund me $300, $150 a piece, right? You just wait. Oh, just, oh, just wait. Just, oh, you just wait. We'll get to the, uh, the, the refund in a minute, but not only did we please respond to me via email, they were responding to other people who were making references about my videos and Instagram comments. Now I could have sworn I had more screenshots of different comments and things, but I could only find one, so that's the only one that I'm going to be referencing. So on one of their Instagram posts that was around August 31st or September 1st, not quite sure exactly which day it was on, there is a comment left that said, when will the box ship? And underneath that comment, somebody replied and said, probably never, check out Alexandra Ryan on YouTube. She's done two reviews on them. She's paid for at least six months worth of boxes and has only gotten two, which that wording I guess could be a little bit confusing because it kind of makes it seem like I had paid for six boxes, but no, it was six months worth because it did take me like six months to get my first box. <laughs> we please responded and said, bonjour, she actually paid for three boxes and got two, so we ship every other month. She was aware that we were delayed, but kept her membership. Smiley face. So as you can see, this comment is incorrect. Uh, I paid for four boxes and I only got one and a half. Also, I received no information about any type of delay until April 16th. So over three months of me being subscribed, I didn't receive any details or information about things being delayed. And they also kept continually saying, oh, they'll be shipped out next week. Oh, they'll be shipped out next week. So I had a promise that my boxes would eventually get to me. Plus I paid for the subscription. I was fully expecting to receive items that I could talk about and review on my channel. I paid for a good and a service and I I expected to get that good in service in return. And yeah, you know, I, I didn't cancel, I didn't suspend my subscription because I felt like I didn't need to because that's not how a subscription service works. You subscribe, you get the box, they charge you again, you get the box, they charge you again, you get the box. I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> it's not my fault that you're not able to get your product out to your customers. The comments on that post must have since been deleted or the post just in general. Um, I have gone back to look for it and I can't find the original comment or the response anywhere on any of the posts in between that date range. Of course, I can't say that for sure, but going back and looking at their Instagram, it's, it's no longer there. So far, this has just been my experience with the subscription and the company and the box, but I did want to give you guys some other perspectives from different people. I want you guys to know that it's not just me. Many other people have issues with We Please, according to reviews left on the internet. There's a whole Reddit thread called We Please Warning, discussing the same kind of issues that I was having for my box during the same time period. On my subscription addiction, there are many comments where people are having the same type of grievances. They're calling it out as a scam because they are not receiving their boxes. They're paying for things and just never get anything in return. The reviews from June and July of this year lead me to believe that these things haven't really changed, even though many restrictions have lifted, so that would seem to make it easier for them to get things from overseas. And because they are still having the same shipping fulfillment issues and not being able to get boxed off to customers, that leads me to believe that those excuses that they gave last year might have been over-exaggerated just a little. There have been 147 complaints lodged against them on the Better Business Bureau website, most of which are seeking refunds for boxes that they never received, and I assume some are probably from refunds that never came, because that's exactly what happened to me. Filling you guys in on the current situation as of today, July 29th, 2021, I have yet to be refunded the $300 I was promised. Say what you will about my finances and my ability to keep track of them, but I just, I believed them. I believed them. I, when they told me they were sending me a refund, they sent me those screenshots of those very blurry confirmations. In my naivety, I just believed they would send the refund. Things happened, life went on, and it just eventually, I forgot about it. You know, I just, I wasn't thinking about the refund from We Please. However, when I was making this video and I was really digging into like the timeline and everything, I started thinking, oh, when 
did that refund come through? How long did it take them to send that refund to me after they promised they did or claimed they did? Then I started thinking, wait a minute, <laughs> didn't I actually ever get it? Because I'm not remembering like looking at my bank statement and seeing like in the credit line, $150 two times. I don't, that's not something I remember happening. So I went to my bank statements online and I started scrolling through them. I started in November, 2020, the month they said that my refund would be issued. And I went through all the way till now, till this month, July, 2021. And I didn't see anything. I didn't see a single credit from We Please. But wanting to make sure I didn't miss anything, wanting to be incredibly thorough, I called my bank and I sat on the phone with a representative and us together went through my bank statements searching for two separate credits from We Please saying that they had refunded me my $150. We looked for the two separate credits. We looked for it as one $300 credit. We couldn't find a single credit from We Please in my bank statements. And because, again, I wanted to be incredibly thorough before I made the accusation that they did not give me my refund, I went back through two more times. And you know what? As I was filming this video, I thought, I just gotta check one more time. I paused what I was saying, I went into my computer, went through every single bank statement from November 2020 to July 2021, looking for that credit, hoping maybe we just, the, the person from the bank and I somehow missed it the multiple times that we went through, but no. There's absolutely no refund issued to this date to me from We Please. I also checked my PayPal just in case because it does have a list of things that I had purchased through my PayPal with my card. So I went to my PayPal, I can see the four payments to We Please, but there are absolutely no credits or refunds issued from We Please to my account. So immediately I go to send an email in response to the email they sent me about my refunds. And I said, hello, this is a very late follow-up to our last email, but I assumed there'd be no issue, so I did not feel the need to initially respond. However, I'm ready to check and make sure the refunds to my account did actually go through because I just looked through all of my statements from November 2020 to this month with a representative from my bank and there is not a single credit from your company to my account as promised. This is an issue that needs to be addressed and fixed immediately. I expect a swift response. Regards, Alexandria myself. Yes, regards. I don't think I've said regards at the end of an email ever. It's typically, have a great day. Thank you so much. But no, regards. Yeah, which truly is the most stern email or message I've ever sent. Probably the most stern thing I've ever said to anyone. <laughs> but gosh darn it, I was livid. After going through all of this, reliving everything that happened with We Please, then discovering that they never issued my $300 refund, I was I was livid. So currently, as it stands right now, as I am filming, I am waiting for a response from We Please. I keep very nervously checking my phone, which I just had to like plug in because it was dying. I keep nervously checking my phone for an email and response. But truly, I just wanted to share my experience with you guys because I was fortunate enough to have a platform to be able to voice my grievances and that's the only reason they reached out and responded and offered a refund, which they didn't give me, in the first place. So if you're somebody who doesn't have a platform like this, like how are you supposed to be able to get them to be accountable for what they've done. I feel like they straight up lied. I feel like they are scamming people and I feel like they stole from me. And that is my personal experience and my personal review. And honestly, I, I wanna leave you with this. Of course, you know, you gotta be careful online. You gotta be careful who you buy from that kind of stuff. But also don't let a company make you feel bad for when they're failing you as a business. They are not doing you some type of favor by selling you their products, their services, their goods. They're simply making money off of you, which fine, that's how things work. But don't let them make you feel bad for when they can't deliver on what they promised to. They honestly made me feel bad, like it was my fault for not canceling. But if there wasn't an issue with the service, there'd be no reason for me to cancel. This whole thing has just been a truly a whirlwind. I did not think it was going to end this way. I thought I was going to be like, yeah, I got my refund. I'm glad I was able to get my refund. You know, watch out for them though, because it doesn't seem like they're still on their game just yet. But after finding out that they have not sent me my refund and people are still having these same type of issues, I cannot recommend this company. I don't trust this company and um, you can do with that what you will. Again, this is my personal review, my personal opinion, and um, that's all I can give you guys. 
I think that's the most like anger that's ever poured out of me in front of the camera. My face is so hot. Uh, it's also very orange. Sorry about that. It's orange this whole time. Now it's like extra red underneath making it more orange. But anyway, that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so very much for watching. Please go ahead and consider subscribing if you would not mind. It would mean the absolute world to me. And I just hope you guys have a lovely, wonderful, fantastic day. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.